My name is Tung Fei Liu. I'm also affiliated with the State Key Laboratory of Synthetical Automation for Process Industries, China. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to thank Andre and Patrick for your kind invitation, which makes it possible for me to share my recent result on a uh, result that is closely relevant to input to state stability and its application. It is my great honor to participate in the online seminar on ISS and its applications. Today, I'd like to uh, introduce our recent result, a uh, small result, um, on single perturbation. In particular, uh, I will discuss the possibility of uh, extending the standard singular perturbation model to the more general case in which the perturbation parameters are replaced by state dependent functions. Okay. Okay. First, I'd like to mention that this is a joint work with my long term collaborator, Prof. Professor Zhongping Jiang at U New York University. We only have a conference publication. This result was presented at the 12th AFEC NOCOS, NOCOS 2022, which was held uh, in Canberra in 2023, delayed because of the COVID. So regarding the background, time scales, many complex systems exhibit multiple time scales. Singular perturbation tools emerged in fluid dynamics in the early 20th century. Uh, there are different ways to understand the singular perturbation, uh, singular perturbation theory. In my opinion, I would consider that uh, when some system parameters goes to some limit value, the dynamic behavior of the system is changed significantly. It is commonly recognized that the methods were introduced to systems and control in the 1960s by Peter Kokotovich and his colleagues. In this talk, I would focus on the uh, new class of singularly perturbed systems. So this is the singular perturbed system involving two time scales where X and Z form the state, G and W represent the external disturbances and epsilon is a small positive constant called the perturbation parameter, which is used to characterize the different time scales. When epsilon is very, very small, it is intuitive that the dynamics of the Z subsystem is very, very fast. The When the dynamics of the Z subsystem is so fast that the dynamic transient performance can be neglected, then we may use some steady, static steady state map to approximate the, the Z subsystem. In this case, the dynamics, the dynamic behavior of the system is can, can be abstractly approximated by the dynamics of the Z sub uh, X subsystem. This is the reason why we call the Z subsystem fast subsystem and uh, call the X subsystem slow subsystem. For the singularly perturbed system, the singularly perturbed system is said to be in the standard form if for each fixed X, the equilibrium of the fast subsystem is an isolated real root. Uh, in this case, intuitively, we may directly use a function to represent the, the static map from X to Z. And uh, it is uh, very easy for us to substitute the static map to the slow dynamics to get the reduced order system of the singularly perturbed system. Okay, regarding the literature, of course, uh, tremendous efforts have been paid to uh, develop fundamental theory for singularly perturbed systems. The fundamental problems including initial value problems, order reduction, and of course, stability. I apologize for the incompleteness of the uh, of the reference list, but uh, I should mention the seminal work, the fundamental work by Chifonov in 1948. Uh, also, the, the theory has, has been extended to various systems, systems D 
described by different models, including stochastic systems, time delay systems, hybrid systems, and PDE systems. We can also find a wide range of applications, including optimal re regulation, high gain, high gain control, integral control, adaptive control, stochastic control, extreme seeking, and so on. Uh, my study is motiv motivated by several examples. The first example is about uh, integral control. We can see that this plant Z is the state, Y is the output, and X is the reference input. We make assumptions on the steady state map of the plant and the, the corresponding stability properties. We assume that there exists a function phi such that for each fixed X, phi X is the equilibrium of the plant. And we also assume that for each fixed x, the plant is uh, symptotically stable as the equilib or corresponding equilibrium. By integral control, we want to update the reference input x so that the output of the plant is steered to some predetermined set point. So, so here is the linear integral feedback. The time derivative of the reference input x uh, linearly depends on the output of the plant. Here, epsilon is a positive constant. By choosing epsilon small enough, we expect that the closed loop system retains the stability property of the plant. And at the same time, the output of the plant is steered to some uh, desired uh, set point, of course, with this uh, uh, linear integral feedback, we just impact, we, 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 we want the output of the plant to go to zero. Uh, clearly, the closed loop system is in the form of the standard singular perturbation model. Uh, conventional singular perturbation theory often requires exponential stability of the plant at steady states for a symptotic stability of the closed loop system. If the plant is a linear one, uh, it is uh, is is okay, but uh, for nonlinear plants, sometimes it seems to be too restrictive to assume exponential stability. Here, let's consider a very uh, simple example. Uh, uh, here, the Z subsystem uh, represents the plant, and the X subsystem represents the linear integral feedback. Epsilon is a positive constant. Uh, we we can easily verify that this plant admits a steady state map, which is basically an identity function. But because of the strong nonlinear dynamics, the system is uh, we can uh, the system is not exponentially stable at the steady states. We can only guarantee a symptotic stability. Mm, by directly applying Lyapunov's first theorem, we can verify instability of the closed loop system at zero equilibrium. So our solution is to introduce some nonlinear non terms to the integral feedback. We consider uh, a nonlinear integral controller in this form. Here, the time derivative of the reference input doesn't uh, doesn't uh, linearly depends on the output of the plant. Here is a nonlinear function, rho s zero, which de depends on the magnitude of the of the output of the plant. Um, in uh, in this way, we uh, we hope that we can uh, tune, we can uh, uh, update uh, the reference input of the plant in. Uh, in some nonlinear way to improve the flexibility of the uh, of the of the design for improved performance. Indeed, within our new framework uh, to be discussed later, we can achieve global asymptotic stability as the origin as long as the nonlinear function rho s zero is less than or equal to some uh, critical function. And this is the resulting nonlinear integral control system. Okay, another example is about feedback op optimization. We still consider the plant in this uh, form uh, as uh, considered in the integral control example. We still make assumption on the stead steady state map 
of the plant and the asymptotic stability property of the uh, equilibrium when the reference input x is fixed. But the objective is to design an algorithm to update the reference input x so that the closed loop system state uh, keeps bounded and converge to some point that solves the optimization problem. Here, phi is the is an objective function. Okay, uh, it is it is still a common assumption that the plant should be exponentially stable at the steady states for ensured convergence of the closed loop feedback optimization system. We want to develop a more general result for strongly nonlinear, not necessarily exponential stable systems. This is also motivated by the so-called variable metric gradient flow algorithm, which is given by this equation. Normally, people update the op optimization variable um, by directly using the gradient uh, gradient information of the objective function. GS basically represents the gradient of the objective function. Uh, but in the variable metric gradient flow algorithm, here is a nonlinear term, which depends on the magnitude of the gradient uh, value uh, for possibly improve the performance of the optimization uh, system. Okay. Uh, if here the rho s zero term is a constant, then the closed loop system can be written uh, in the uh, standard singular perturbation form. But now rho s zero is not a constant; it is a nonlinear function. Okay. Another example is about gradient free coordinated source seeking problem. We can see the multi agent system composed of n subsystems and agents uh, with each agent represented modeled as a integrator. Pi is the position of the agent, i and vi is the velocity. We also can see we, we also can see the velocity as the control input of the uh, of the uh, agents. Okay, given an objective function h uh, in our system setup, each agent i only has access to the value of the objective function that depends on its own position, which is hpi. It is decided that uh, uh, the positions of the agents keep bounded, and the average position p0 converges, converges to a neighborhood of the optimal point p star, which minimizes the objective function h. In practice, we may use objective function h to represent the field function generated by some signal source. This is the reason why we call this problem source-seeking problem. Okay, I proposed a new coordinated source-seeking control law to solve the problem. The control law is composed of two parts. One part is called formation control part which is based on the standard formation control algorithm. And the other part is called the source seeking part, which is based on um, mm -hmm. distributed averaging algorithm to estimate the gradient uh, information of the objective function, um, uh, the validity of this dis uh, distributed averaging algorithm can be proved by using mean value theorem. Then based on the estimation of the gradient information, we can still, uh, we can still, uh, we can, we can design a, a control law to steer the multi-agent system, to drive the multi-agent system to, to the minimum point. Here, C0 is the positive constant, sigma is the nonlinear function. Okay, this figure shows the scenario of the problem and the basic idea of the of the of the control algorithm. V F basically is basically used to keep the formation, and V I E is used to drive the multi agent system to the optimum point. Okay, I'd like to mention that the control law only uses relative positions, the measured values of the objective function, and doesn't rely on global absolute information of the optimum 
point pista or grading measurements. The, uh, uh, this is the reason why, because the algorithm uh, grading free. Okay, here intuitively, uh, the formation control part should be fast enough because without good formation control, it is not easy to do gradient estimation. The gradient estimation part should also be fast enough because without good gradient estimation, it is not easy to do source seeking. Here, uh, in, intuitively, the, the, the constant C0 and nonlinear function sigma should be slow enough. So this is the, the, the closed loop multi-agent system basically involves multiple time scales, but intuitively, at least the, uh, uh, the, the constant C0 and the nonlinear function sigma should be uh, fine-tuned to make the source-seeking part slow enough to guarantee the stability of the closed-loop system. Uh, it is indeed non-trivial to give an explicit parameter condition on, to guarantee convergence. Our theory will ensure coordinated source-seeking. So the equations on the left-hand side basically gives the standard model of singular perturbation. I just introduced uh, a time rescaling um, uh, so that I can use the constant, uh, so that each subsystem is uh, associated with a uh, perturbation parameter. Uh, delta is associated with the slow dynamics, delta over epsilon is associated with the fast dynamics, but uh, this model is equivalent, equivalent with the, the, the model I just uh, uh, mentioned, the standard model, but this, the aforementioned case studies demonstrate the need to tune the time scales in some nonlinear fashion. So I proposed a new model. Uh, basically, I repl uh, replace the perturbation parameters with perturbation functions. The functions are state dependent functions. The functions are positive valued. By positive valued, I mean that they take non negative values when. Uh, and uh, the, the, the functions take non-negative values. And uh, when the arguments are non-zero, the functions take positive values. Okay, this is the new singular perturbation model. But to simplify the discussions, I start with the disturbance-free case uh, like this. We, for now, we neglect the influence of external disturbances. Uh, following the convention of a singular perturbation, we still make assumptions on the steady, steady state map of the fast dynamics. There exists a steady state map phi from x to z so that phi x and x solves the uh, steady state equation, equilibrium equation of the fast uh, subsystem. Uh, to simplify the discussions, I also assume that zero, I mean the origin is an equilibrium of the slow subsystem when we substitute the steady state map into the slow dynamics. We, this means that zero phi zero is an equilibrium of the singularly perturbed system. Mm -hmm. Before I make, uh, before making assumptions on the on the uh, subsystem uh, stability properties of the subsystems, I'd like to introduce the state transformation. The figure on on the left, the block diagram on, over here, uh, shows the interaction between the uh, slow subsystem, the X subsystem, and the fast subsystem, the Z subsystem. We already make assumption on the steady state map of the fast subsystem. If the dynamics of the fast subsystem is uh, so fast that the dynamic uh, response, the transient behavior can be neglected, then we can use the uh, static map phi x to approximate the fast subsystem. And we define th this, is, this result, in, uh, this, this leads to the notion of boundary layer subsystem with uh, we uh, uh, intuitively we may use the air state between the uh, fast subsystem and the st its steady state map to represent the re re uh, response dynamic response of the fast subsystem and uh, 
uh, in this case, if we uh, consider we we use the static map phi x to approximate the fast subsystem, if we substitute the static map into the slow subsystem, we get the reduced order subsystem. Is this is in accordance with the basic idea of singular perturbation? We make stability assumptions on the reduced order subsystem and boundary layer subsystem. Okay, I directly use Lyapunov functions to characterize the stability properties. Okay, Vs corresponds to the slow subsystem because corresponds to the reduced order subsystem. Vf uh, uh, characterize the stability of the boundary layer subsystem, which corresponds to the fast subsystem. Okay. Uh, I assume that Vs is continuously differentiable. I assume that it is a positive definite and radially unbounded, unbounded with respect to the state X and satisfy this implication-based condition. Okay, if we just first, if we neglect this condition, the, this part basically means that the reduced order subsystem is globally asymptotically stable at the origin. Here, this implication, uh, this condition uh, is used to characterize the robustness of the stability property of the reduced order subsystem with respect to the error state of the boundary layer subsystem. Here, Vf, as assumed here, is, is positive, po positive definite and radially unboundedness, unbounded with respect to the error state. So this condition basically guarantees the robustness of the a reduced order subsystem with respect to the error state of the boundary layer subsystem. Okay, uh, I also make assumption on the stability of the unscaled boundary layer subsystem. Okay, Vf is assumed to be positive definite and radially unbounded with respect to the error state and satisfy this condition. This condition basically means that if x is a fixed one, then Vf is the Lyapunov function of the boundary layer uh, subsystem. But, uh, but the, in the singularly perturbed system, uh, X is changing. We will deal with this later. So based on these assumptions, the singularly perturbed system can be rendered globally asymptotically stable at the uh, expected equilibrium zero phi zero. If these conditions are satisfied. I, I'm not going into the technical details of these conditions, but uh, I, I I'd like to mention that uh, these conditions are somehow intuitive. Okay, basically, this condition means that U S should have a, a positive value of the lower bound. If U S is zero, then the stability uh, the stability of the reduced order subsystem disappears. So this condition is uh, is uh, uh, quite natural, okay? Okay, this condition means that rho f should, uh, the, the, the perturbation function for the fast subsystem should be large enough. And with the lower bound function, larger than the upper bound function of the perturbation function of the slow dynamics. Okay, I would also like to mention that uh, we can always find such perturbation functions, rho s and rho f. Okay, since the stability properties of the subsystems are characterized by Lyapunov functions, it is natural to ask whether we can construct Lyapunov function for the singularly perturbed system, of course. Okay, this is the uh, max type Lyapunov function constructed based on the Lyapunov functions of the subsystems. Vs is the Lyapunov function of the reduced order subsystem, a scaled reduced order subsystem, and Vf is the Lyapunov function for the unscaled uh, boundary layer subsystem. Or regarding the proof. Uh, we just use the we just consider the singularly perturbed system as an interconnected system and, and apply small game based analysis. Uh, it is uh, quite easy to prove uh, 
uh, that the skilled reduced all the subsystem admits uh, uh, an earlier proof based RSS property. Yes, uh, as long as the perturbation function rho is satisfied the uh, lower bound condition, uh, we can also prove that the skilled boundary layer subsystem uh, admits a ISS Lyapunov function. Uh, indeed, the 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 Lyapunov function for the unskilled boundary layer subsystem still works as the Lyapunov function for the scaled boundary layer subsystem. The problem is that we have to take into account the influence of the changing x, because when we make assumption on the unskilled boundary layer subsystem, we, we, we can see the x is, is a fixed one, but uh, in the singularly perturbed system, x is the state of the slow dynamics. So, so the the change of x influences the stability of the of the boundary layer subsystem, but we can still prove input to state stability property of the scaled boundary layer subsystem with respect with with the state of the reduced order system as the input. Okay, so now we have Lyapunov based ISS of both the reduced order and the boundary layer subsystems. Moreover, we are using uh, gain functions to characterize, to describe the uh, the interaction between the two subsystems. So it is quite natural for us to apply Lyapunov based small gain analysis uh, to the singularly perturbed system with the interconnection gains gamma s and gamma f satisfying the small gain condition of a convention inspires a max Lyapunov function. Okay, this is quite standard. So I'd like to make some comments on the relationship between uh, my results and the existing closely related results regarding the assumption on asymptotic stability of the boundary layer system for the local case, the asymptotic stability assumption is definitely weaker than assumptions such as exponential stability or augmented with Lipschitz continuity, uh, which was made by Collis and uh, Glimo in their some control paper published in the 1990s. I would also like to mention that small gain analysis, the idea of small gain analysis is not new to the literature of singular perturbation. The idea was discussed in uh, Christophe's and the Teo's 1996 TUC paper. And the Lyapunov based conditions uh, given by Saberi and Halio's 1984 TUC paper are closely related to L2 small gain conditions. Nonlinear small gain theorems have also been widely used in singular, singular perturbation applications, for example, uh, extreme of seeking. Okay, uh, okay. I, I, I can also find some uh, relationship between my analysis and the so-called level set analysis. In Chikhonov's 1948 paper, and the subsequent studies, such as uh, Hoppenstedt's result and uh, Waterplace results, level sets are defined by coordinately evaluating the abnormal black functions of the subsystems, uh, which is also closely relevant to the idea of max Lyapunov functions. When the system, uh, when the system is reduced to linear one, uh, we may construct. Uh, uh, max Lyapunov functions based on linearly weighted Lyapunov functions of the subsystems. This has been done by habits in uh, <laughs> was done by habits in the 1970s uh, in his uh, same applied mathematics paper. He constructed a Lyapunov like function by taking the maximum of linearly weighted Lyapunov like functions of the subsystems. Okay. When we have to take into account the influence of external disturbances, okay, we uh, we uh, we we have a more general uh, result um, with 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 unscaled subsystems 
admitting ISS properties, the singularly perturbed system can be rendered ISS by, by appropriately choosing the perturbation functions rho S and rho F. No, not surprising. Uh, a special case is that the perturbation functions are reduced to perturbation parameters. So this, uh, in this case, this is actually the normal singularly perturbed system, but based on our analysis, we can give an, an alter, or alter, alternative result. Under the uh, aforementioned assumptions, suppose in addition that this inequality is satisfied. I will de uh, briefly discuss this condition uh, a little bit later. Then the singularly perturbed system uh, uh, can be rendered input state stable by appropriately choosing the param uh, perturbation parameters. Regarding the, I think this condition is quite meaningful um, because GS is basically the magnitude of the slow dynamics and the lambda f basically represents the influence of the slow dynamics to the fast dynamics. And R, alpha f is basically the dissipation term of the fast dynamics. This condition means that uh, uh, means that um, uh, uh, we we should we should find the constant c zero small enough so that the influence of the slow dynamics to the fast dynamics can be dominated by the dissipation term of the fast subsystem. We do not assume exponential stability at steady states. We don't assume uh, leakage continuity on the plant dynamics. Here is a very quick example. We can see this uh, system. It is uh, uh, in the standard singular perturbation uh, form. Uh, the, the, the system dynamics are saturated. Uh, Okay, here the Z subsystem is basically the uh, sorry the, the 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 fast dynamics, and the X subsystem is basically the uh, slow dynamics. This is an integral feedback control system. We can find a steady state map of the Z subsystem, which is basically the identity function. We can construct quadratic Lyapunov functions for the subsystems. We can find the condition on C0, the, the, the range of C0 that guarantees the globally global asymptotic stability of the closed loop system. We can also construct a strict Lyapunov function based on the Lyapunov functions of the subsystems. Okay, sometimes uh, the perturbation functions cannot be chosen arbitrarily. For example, in integral control, we can uh, normally we can only tune the uh, time scale of the of the integrator, which corresponds to the, the slow dynamic, which is, which corresponds to the slow dynamics. If we write the closed loop system in the singular perturbation model, uh, in this case, we can see the special case. Uh, here the perturbation function depends on the uh, here the the uh, we do not tune the time scale of the fast dynamics we only tune the dynamic uh, time scale of the slow dynamics. Moreover, we assume that the perturbation function depends on the magnitude of the dynamics. Okay, on the uh, still on the we still make assumptions on the on the on the stat, steady state. Uh, map of the fast dynamics. We still make assumptions on the stability properties of the unscaled dynamics. Uh, if there exists a non-decreasing uh, positive valued function rho s bar, uh, satisfying this inequality condition, we can find uh, perturbation functions in this specific form to guarantee ISS of this singularly perturbed system. Still, this inequality basically means that the influence of the slow dynamics to the fast dynamics should be small enough, should be dominated by the dissipation term of the fast subsystem. Okay. 
Another special case is that we want uh, we want to just tune the dynamics of a fast subsystem. We still consider the case in which the perturbation function depends on the magnitude of the dynamics. Uh, we still make the same assumptions on the steady steady state map and the uh, of the fast sub subsystem and the stability of the unskilled subsystems. Uh, if this condition is satisfied, we can find uh, perturbation functions to guarantee input to the stability of the singularly perturbed system. Okay, if we uh, neglect the influence uh, of the disturbance, this condition basically means that we require that the dynamics of the fast subsystem uh, sh should satisfy a monotonicity condition with respect to the error state of the boundary layer subsystem. This, the, this condition, in my opinion, is quite natural. Okay, now let's return to the examples. Okay, uh, uh, for nonlinear integral control, we can see the uh, plant in this form. We can see the nonlinear integral uh, controller in this form. The, uh, this closed loop system uh, uh, is clearly in the form of the generalized uh, singular perturbation model uh, under mild con assumptions on the steady state map of the plant. Uh, we can and the uh, uh, stability property of the plant as the steady states, uh, we can prove uh, the validity of the nonlinear integral controller to guarantee global asymptotic stability uh, of the closed loop system at uh, the equilibrium. Okay, uh, uh, for the example of feedback optimization. We can see that this plant may make assumption on the convexity, a uh, strong convexity of the objective function, which is normally um, assumed in the literature of feedback optimization. We also assume that the gradient function GS is basically a gradient function of the objective function, uh, satisfies uh, Lipschitz continuity condition. These two conditions, assumptions together guarantees that the normal um, gradient-based uh, uh, optimization algorithm admits some robustness property. Okay, for this plant and for this variable metric gradient flow algorithm, we can prove uh, the existence of uh, the perturbation function rho s0 for uh, global asymptotic stability of the closed loop feedback optimization system. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, here is a very simple example. We consider this nonlinear plant, which we have shown uh, a global asymptotic stability. We have shown the existence of the static map, right? Uh, or the objective is to design the uh, update law for x to steer the state z to the minimizing point of the quadratic objective function. We designed the variable metric gradient flow algorithm to solve the problem. Uh, I'd like to mention that this example also serves as an example of nonlinear integral control because in my opinion, integral control can be considered as a special case of feedback optimization uh, with the quadratic objective functions. Okay, uh, regarding the third example of gradient-free coordinated source-seeking, we also have a result. Okay, this is the closed loop system. Okay, this is the multi-agent system. This, uh, these two parts form the uh, distributed coordinate control law for the multi-agent system. Okay, uh, we, okay, we, we, we make, uh, to simplify our discussions, I make assumptions on strong convexity of the objective function and the uh, Lipschitz continuity of the gradient function. Okay, for the multi uh, consider the multi-agent system with a proposed uh, distributed controller on the 
these assumption, assumptions for any p epsilon larger than zero. We can find the controller parameters so that the closed loop stays keep bounded and the average position p0 of the multi-agent system ultimately converges to a neighborhood of the optimal point p star with the size of the a neighborhood less than or equal to p epsilon. Mm -hmm. So conclusions, I just proposed a new singular perturbation framework using state dependent functions along with global robust asymptotic stability results. I hope that this result is of potential interest for constructive design because with the state dependent perturbation functions, we uh, the uh, singularly perturbed system can be rendered to retain the uh, global asymptotic stability properties of the subsystem. So this makes it possible for us to do constructive recursive designs uh, by taking advantage of the system structures. Uh, regarding future directions, I'd like to mm -hmm mentioned trajectory-based approach because for many nonlinear systems, we don't have explicit Lyapunov-based characterization of this stability. Uh, we may also consider different stability characterizations. We may also consider nonlinear systems described by different models. We only consider the deterministic finite dimensional time invariant ordinary differential equations. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we may also consider applications, of course. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much.